All right, y'all, we're about to dive into this episode where Ryan and I talked about baggage. We talked about letting go of the past. We talked about entering relationships with past baggage. It was a conversation I really enjoyed, but uh, before we get into that, um, Ryan's not here to record this intro with me because yesterday, the day I'm recording this, he broke his back snowboarding, broke five of his uh, transverse processes on his lumbar spine in well outside of Missoula, Montana. So I don't have any updates for you other than he went to the emergency room and he was able to walk in there and he was able to leave and he is fine so far. He reports to me that he is in the most pain he's ever been in and that's a lot coming from him because he is literally the the most durable person that I know. And so man, if you want to tweet him do that. Tell him to get well soon. I'm sure he'll be back in no time. He'll be wearing all kinds of braces or hell, he'll probably skateboard right in here. The reason I wanted to record this intro, I was hopefully going to do it with Ryan, but but that's okay uh, that we're not doing it together, is uh, we're making some changes to the podcast. If you didn't catch this uh, last episode, last episode, we talked about collectibles and toward the end, we talked about how we're making some uh, a shift in the podcast. And so I think it's some pretty exciting news and the feedback we've gotten so far has been amazing talking about it with our Patreon supporters and on social media, et cetera. Uh, So in March, 2019, which is not too far around the corner, the minimalist podcast, uh, the popular free public version that you are listening to right now in your podcast player, or or maybe you're, you're watching this on YouTube, this podcast, The Minimalist Podcast, is changing its format just just slightly. In fact, it's not even a real format change. The format itself is going to stay the same. We're just going to attenuate the, uh, the main podcast a little bit so that we can make our podcast, we can produce more meaningful creations. Uh, we want to make it a little bit more intimate and private and personal as well. And we're going to do that over on Patreon. So let's talk about why we're, we're making this change. Well, Uh, First off, there are some topics that we want to discuss semi-privately in front of a a small, empathetic, understanding group of people, sort of conversations that we would have with close friends or family, just trusted trusted people in our lives. And because our Patreon audience, we're on Patreon, we have a few thousand people over there, Uh, that audience, those subscribers are people who support our work the most. We believe that those people are the best people to have some sort of conversations where we are a little bit more loose with what we talk about. Conversations we may not want to have in front of the hundreds of thousands or millions of people who listen to the main podcast. So we're going to do some longer form conversations over on Patreon starting in March because we want to be able to think out loud in front of a small group of people who are willing to give us the the leeway that we need to grow and fail and change our minds in real time. And we need to be able to talk about things like our failed habits, our family lives, our struggles, our personal relationships, our emotions, and our insecurities without fear of judgment and public ridicule. And we believe that Patreon for us is the best place for us to delve into sensitive subjects, difficult discussions and our our normal unique brand of silly tomfoolery and patreon is also the best way for us to keep this podcast 100 percent advertisement free both the main feed and the minimalists private podcast that we have over on patreon so we want to keep our podcast 100 percent advertisement free and the way we we fund it to pay for the studio space to pay for podcast sean and jordan no more filming it is uh, with with Patreon. And so uh, next month, February 2019, the Minimalist Podcast is taking a month off. Well, we're going to take a month off of the free public feed. So we're just taking some time off. We'll be back in March. And when we come back in March, it's going to be a little bit different, a little bit attenuated. But don't worry, uh, we're still going to record four private podcast episodes for our Patreon audience. So if you're a Patreon subscriber, first off, thank you. But also you will expect, you can expect regular podcast episodes throughout the month of February. We're going to do four episodes every Tuesday. Uh, We're going to do one about products. 
We're doing one about happiness. We're doing one about branding. And we're doing one about gentrification, which should be fascinating because I've been doing some research uh, from some urbanists and uh, some demographers who have been writing about this topic. And in some cities, it's actually way worse than what we might think. And in some cities, man, you could only hope for gentrification. And let's talk about the the nuances there and what are the problems and what are the faux problems of that. In fact, we're going to do that for each of these topics, products, happiness, branding, and gentrification. So if you have questions about these topics, by the way, we're happy to answer them. Just head on over to, to Patreon and leave them in the comments. But then beginning in March, the Minimalists podcast, the one you're listening to right now, the, the popular free public version will return with 30 minute episodes every week, similar to our current format. We're gonna answer your voicemails, your questions. We'll do lightning round questions and minimal maxims and added value segment and right here, right now. We'll do listener comments and tips, but we're going to accomplish that in 30 minutes every week. The irony of this is a lot of people have actually asked for that. How do I get shorter podcasts from you? Well, that's not the reason we're doing this necessarily, but it, it is, one huge benefit for folks who don't want an extended conversation. If, however, you do want an extended conversation, then you can join us each week over on Patreon. We'll do 60 to 90, maybe 120 minutes, heck, maybe two hours plus some weeks, depending on how the conversations go. If you listen to last week's Patreon conversation, you'll notice it was, it was very free-flowing. It was very loose, and Ryan and I Man, we talked about some stuff we certainly would not talk about on this main podcast feed just because, well, it's kind of like a stand-up comic who is testing out new material. Sometimes you need, you need the safety of a smaller group, a few hundred or a few thousand people instead of hundreds of thousands of people before you can, it's sort of a gestation period for you to work out your material for the for the rest of the world before you share it with the rest of the world so every week we'll do a 30 minute episode we're going to call these the minimal episodes and then each week we'll record an additional long episode an hour plus maybe even two hours plus some weeks we're going to call those the maximal episode and those will be exclusively for our patreon subscribers uh, and in and, and those episodes, we'll have sort of the unrestrained freedom to dive deep into our patrons' questions about that week's topic. So we might the topic might be about decluttering, say, and we'll do a 30-minute episode about that, and then we'll really dive deep and talk about some personal experiences and uh, some personal struggles, things that we currently struggle with now as well, just for our Patreon subscribers. Uh, the maximal episodes, by the way, will contain entirely different content and material from the minimal episode. So there'll be no overlap between them other than the, the topic itself. Uh, we're also going to add a new segment. It's called More About Less. Each week during our Patreon-only maximal episode, Ryan and I are going to read about a current event that ties directly or indirectly to minimalism. Uh, then we'll share our opinions. And, and because we both have different points of, of view, Ryan and I think differently. We have different beliefs politically, spiritually, emotionally. Sometimes we're called the head and the heart of minimalism. Uh, we'll probably disagree on a lot of the topics because of uh, our different points of view. And that's the best place. Patreon is the best place for us to really disagree with each other. And I bet you don't mind if we argue a little bit, if mommy and daddy are fighting, as long as we hug it out afterwards, right? Well, we have more details coming for you next month. If you don't want to miss that, you can head on over to theminimalists.com slash support. That will take you over to our Patreon page, uh, or you can just go to patreon.com slash theminimalists. All right, let's take a, a listen to this conversation Ryan and I had before he broke his back. This is called Baggage. The Minimalists. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Minimalist Podcast, where we discuss what it means to live a meaningful life with less. My name is Joshua Fields Milburn. And I'm Ryan Nicodemus. And together, we are the Minimalists. And today, we're going to talk about baggage. And I'm not talking about luggage. Oh, man. I, I'm i so glad we get to talk about all my baggage today. <laughs> Ryan prepared for like the, the wrong episode. He brought in like a, <laughs> a bunch of luggage just sitting back here. <laughs> No, I just Where wrote down going? a list. I wrote down a list of all my problems <laughs> that I have that I've ever had. I thought today we're just going <laughs> to... you've ever had? Yeah, we're just talking about all my baggage today, right? I wonder what that stack of paper is. 
<laughs> well, uh, we do have some questions about baggage that we're going to talk about today. And today's first question is from Ice in the Philippines. Alrighty. How do you deal with the excess emotional baggage you have towards a person when you just basically don't talk anymore? Ryan. Josh. Let's say that you're not talking to someone anymore. Yes. Has that ever happened to you? Never. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. Of course. There's a lot of people in my life that... Well, actually, that's not true. That's not true. They're not in your life anymore. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of people who aren't in my life anymore. Well, I'm, I'm trying to think of like... I mean, of course, like, you know, I've talked about my father a lot on the podcast and how we don't talk anymore. Uh-huh. Um, but then, of course, there are other people who are not in my life anymore that... I never went to them and said, hey, you and I aren't talking anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last conversation we had. Like, I did that with my father. Like, hey, look, this relationship is pernicious. I got to let it go, man. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, if you if you want to go all the way back to the parents episode that we recorded, you went into a lot of detail and you yeah. really, really opened up on that. I think it was episode 145. Yeah. But there are also people in my life where uh, we just don't talk anymore that maybe I do hold a little resentment towards like... Mm. Like, like I want to call him up and, you know, give him a piece of my mind or get one last, you know, point in. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know if you ever get that at all, man. Oh, yeah. But, like, I think about, and I'm not going to name names, but. Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> John Doe. <laughs> no, man. Um, I, I uh, especially think about in the corporate world, like, there are people who every once in a while it pops into my head and like just things that they have said to me in the past and ways that they have belittled me or you know tried to tear me down mm -hmm. i instantly get these thoughts of that person's an idiot that person's stupid that they're person's wrong a and I'm moron right. yeah they're wrong and i'm right and that that is a very hard feeling to not perpetuate mm -hmm. um but when i do feel that baggage mm -hmm. surfacing. Um, I get the same thoughts with my dad too, where it's like, oh, he's such an idiot. If he would just, oh, he's such an idiot. Mm -hmm. But I have to remind myself, well, I just look in the mirror and like realize like I am really imp Im imperfect. Like I, I screw up a lot. Yeah. And I know that my, uh, my points of view are not always the, the, the best points of view. They're not always the most correct points of view or even when they are they aren't they don't that doesn't always remain constant either right the thing that is right today that is the right solution today may not be the right solution a year from now a decade from now and for me i found yeah. that to be true with a lot of the the sort of the relationships in my life whether it's a past intimate relationship past friendships past co-worker relationships mm -hmm. the there were relationships that were sort of right at the time but yeah. all things end eventually even yours and my relationship will end yeah I probably mean, end with a, my death on a long enough timeline everything is ephemeral <laughs> yes yeah. and, and so everything ends in some relationships in fact i would argue most relationships in your life will end in your life the weird thing is you don't always know when it ends right, right, right. It's just like there i've heard sam harris talk about this before there is a last time that you will pick up your daughter mm -hmm. you don't know when that is but uh podcast sean has two daughters who are both teenage high school girls and i doubt he's still picking them up <laughs> uh, but there was a time sean when you picked up yeah. gabby for the last time and i bet you didn't realize unless you threw your back out or something because <laughs> you were like hoisting her above You're your like, head. Oh, can't carry her anymore. <laughs> Sean has ridiculous strength, yeah. by the way. Yeah. Yes, he does. Uh, <laughs> I've worked out with Sean. Yeah. He has an amazing deadlift form. <laughs> does he really? <laughs> he really does. Wow. It's <laughs> impressive. Um, coming from Ryan Nicodemus, who lifts all the weights at the gym. Oh, <laughs> keep going. I've seen him. <laughs> they have to go. bring in more weights. <laughs> <laughs> These have all been lifted. Oh my God. Anyway, what I've realized is that <clears throat> there is a last time that you will pick up your child. There yeah. might also be, there is, no, might be, there will be a last time that I talk to you. And it, I, it's hard to make me feel emotional, but just mm. thinking about that makes me feel emotional. Yeah. Like if this was the last time I, I talked to you, that, 
man, that'd be crazy to me. But there will be a last time at some yeah. point. I so might, that means that we need to appreciate every conversation we have with each other, man. And be thankful for the time that we did have together. Yeah. So, so to answer Ice's Ooh, question. Oh, I like that, yeah. To get back to what she's saying is like having some gratitude. In fact, I think one of the, the problems right now with the baggage, the baggage is an expectation. I wish it would be this way. I, I had hoped it would turn out like mm-hmm. this. If it wasn't for this, my life wouldn't be this way. Right. Yeah. Or even if it's not something that uh, is uh, that dramatic, it could just be like, I really hoped that X would happen, but Y happened yeah. in this relationship. Mm-hmm. And... I had a bad expectation, but mm. instead, what if I replace that expectation, which is gratitude for how it has I like been that a or lot, how man. it is? I love that, man. Where, so where I was going with was, you know, me looking in the mirror and realizing how imperfect I am. I can look at the people who I hold that baggage for, and I can say, you know what? Like, they are, they are imperfect. They are just as imperfect as I am. Right. And they're trying to deal with all their imperfections also. And I can, I I guess I can just feel good about um, accepting that I I don't deserve anything, Mm -hmm. which helps with my expectations with which, with uh, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So, so yeah, the expectation thing is often I deserve this from this relationship. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Maybe, maybe you do deserve something um but it's going to be from your own mm-hmm. your own actions right yeah. um and, and so i always i always approach it the same way you do ryan i i'm not entitled to anything from this relationship no. so if i do get something from this relationship if it's a positive relationship then i can get to keep it going mm-hmm. however some relationships end in the middle of your life some of them in unexpectedly others you just have to graduate from before mm-hmm. you get that divorce from them and by the way you get divorces all the time even when you don't know about it uh, if you break up with a girlfriend that is a type of divorce sure right um in, in fact um because you've made a decision, right? The the word decision comes from the same Latin root as incision, which mm. means to cut off from. Mm. And so if you're deciding to end a relationship or someone has decided to end a relationship with you, they've decided to cut off from. Now, it doesn't mean you have to completely cut ties with that person. I think back to my, my former spouse. Mm-hmm. I have a better relationship with Carrie now, mm-hmm. many years later, than I I did when we were married. Now, it took some time, and there was a valley of time where we had to not communicate, and and a lot of emotions were involved. Yeah. But that time did heal the wound enough that, in fact, it was much better after the healing. Yeah. And isn't that the truth with when you get out of a a hospital or you break a bone or, or, or whatever? Uh, quite often after you heal something you're better off than before because you went through that experience and some for me some of my best experiences in life some of the ones i'm most thankful for are some of the hardest some of the worst experiences in my life are some of the best experiences in my life you can tweet that podcast yeah no it's absolutely true man i mean when i think about uh like the relationship with my dad for example i am i am very grateful for being able to let go of that baggage. Mm. Like I'm really grateful to be able to move on. Yeah. And, and again, like anytime I think, cause I do, I'll, I'll get, you know, some, some emotion that gets drawn up. Oh man, he's such an idiot. If he would just, and then I remind myself like, he's not an idiot. Mm-hmm. He's imperfect. Like me, mm. he's dealing with his imperfections and that doesn't make him uh, a stupid or, or anything else. It just, it just means that he doesn't have, uh, the rela- a relationship with him, there, there is not a place in my life where that is going to fit. And right now, maybe you, uh, with Ice in particular, but you, you sort of had to graduate from that relationship in order for it to change. Now, mm-hmm. is there is there potential for a, another relationship with your father in the future? Sure. Yes. But it'll be different from what it was before yeah. if you do go back into that. Yeah. And I think the same, I think about school as a good example. We all were in elementary school at one point mm-hmm. in time, mm-hmm. right? But at some point, you you sort of you you graduated from that, and you may never see your elementary school again, Ryan. Yeah, um, probably not. <laughs> but you can still acknowledge that it it has a 
a meaningful or uh, it was a formative experience in your life yeah and you can appreciate that like i'm glad i went through elementary school mm -hmm. it was a meaningful and f an informative experience in my life mm -hmm. but it wouldn't make any sense now for me to go back to elementary school yeah and i think ice can look at the relationship that way and, yeah and, and be appreciative for what you actually got out of i think it. there's one more piece of advice i want to give ice that that's important um, when I found myself not being able to let go of the baggage, meaning I would wake up in the morning and I would have this anger, mm. uh, and it was towards this relationship that I wanted from my, my father that I'm not getting. Um, I had to go talk to somebody and sometimes you need to go do that to help with the baggage. Now, the thing is, is like, I can talk to you all I want about my dad mm -hmm. and I really enjoy talking to you and you're very receptive and you always, you know, give me a listening ear and you always help me with advice. Um, sometimes, sometimes you need to speak to someone who, well, who you trust, mm -hmm. uh, but also who, who is kind of a benign uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. So for me, like going and seeing a therapist, getting a recommendation from someone I really, really trust for them to say, hey, you should talk to this guy. He's a great therapist. And he's helped me out. Yeah. So so now I have trust for that therapist yeah. and I can bring them in and, and, and kind of get an outsider's uh, outsider's view. It helps, it helps a lot. So Ice, you might want to consider that also. One other thing that I've done in the past, um, especially when I first like em embraced minimalism and I was walking away from certain relationships and then I was a year or two years into it. And it was, this was so. This was before we moved to Montana, mm -hmm. um, sort of the tail end of living in Dayton, Ohio. Uh, I I called a lot of those relationships and, and acknowledged those people mm. for for what they were. And so, I maybe this is one of those relationships where you didn't. It wasn't a, a big divorce that you had to walk away from. There wasn't a big blow up. Maybe there was just distance because life happens and best friends become strangers over time. And so maybe what you can do instead of just feeling that baggage and wishing you could reconnect, um, or maybe you don't even want to reconnect. And that was my case. There was some of these people where it wasn't like I was trying to rekindle the relationship. I just called them and said, hey, I just want you to know you were a really important part of my life for this period of time, this mm -hmm. month, this year, mm -hmm. this decade. And I'm really grateful for that. And why we went our separate ways, it just happened. Or maybe we had a fallout. There are a few people where I'm like, hey, and you know, we had, we had a crazy fallout. You know, we were stupid kids. And I can't believe we did that. And mm -hmm. you said some things, I said some things. It's sort of water under the bridge at this point. I just want you to know I don't hold a grudge uh, against you. And there were even a few people that I knew I had to apologize to. Yeah. If, if there was something I did that was egregious, and even though I didn't recognize it to be egregious at the time, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, you were all imperfect. And of course, I thought that you know, whatever I, I thought was right at the time. Right. And there are a few people I had to apologize to, and also a few people I had to forgive. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think- That forgiveness for, is the best feeling though, man. Right, you it forgive really people, not for them, but for yourself quite often. Yeah. Now, it can help other people as well. In fact, sometimes the best way to forgive uh, is when they don't even know it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to forgive someone if they did something to you in order for you to move on, in order for you to let go of that baggage. I said, I'd love to send you a copy of our book, Everything That Remains. It's uh, the five-year journey of me and Ryan as we went from these suit and tie corporate guys to becoming minimalists and then the minimalists. And a lot of that journey had to do with letting go. It sort of started with letting go of the stuff, right? But, uh, oh, and here's the book. Jordan's telling me to, to hold it up for the camera. <laughs> um, anyway, in, in, in the book, it's actually, it's my favorite thing that we've ever created, anything we've ever written or created. Um, and it's because it was sort of the, the first 32, 33 years of our lives crammed into 200 pages yeah. and the lessons that we learned about letting go and it started with the stuff but then it was letting go so much more and also the lessons we learned along the way and we accidentally picked up some baggage along the way yeah. and hadn't let go of certain habits that we had to let go of and we talk about a lot of that and in particular there's a relationship chapter in here called harvest moon and I think you'll find a lot of value in that chapter and yeah. the whole book. So, Sean, if you could reach out to Ice, send her the audiobook version 
or the book book or the ebook if you'd like it's available in all three formats and we'd love to hear what you all have to say so if you have a comment or a tip about emotional baggage including advice for any of our question askers today then leave us a voicemail 406-219-7839 you can also email a voice memo to podcast at the minimalists.com we'll air our favorite comments and tips on a future episode and stay tuned to the end of this episode for this week's listener comments and tips it's my favorite part of the show so when you call in or you send your voice memo just realize that you can be on the end of the show and then maybe eventually if you're lucky we'll steal your advice and repurpose it appropriately All right, Ryan, what time is it? You know what time it is. It is time for our lightning round where we answer questions from social media. Indeed we do. We're on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at The Minimalists during the lightning round. This is where Ryan and I each do our best to answer every question with just a short, shareable, less than 140 character response. We also put the text of these minimal maxims in the show notes so you can copy and share our pithy answers on social media if you like. And now you can find all of our quotes in one place over at minimalmaxims.com. All righty. Our first lightning round question is from Anna. Anna wants to know, Josh, is sharing your emotional baggage with your partner selfish? What is a good balance? Not only is it not selfish, it's necessary. Yeah. And here's the thing, you know, I am Mr. Outstanding. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, you know, I've, I've been feeling down recently with some illness that's going on, but if I want to change my state, Mm -hmm. I will go to if i'm at the grocery store or whatever someone asks you how are you doing Mm -hmm. we talked to peter rollins uh, about this last year but the uh when we ask how how are you doing we don't literally mean tell me about your ailments Mm. right unless you're a really close friend Mm. so with you or with beck so my my bed partner my business partner (laughs) i'll let you decide which one is which (laughs) um uh when you ask me how i'm doing i am I'm honest in a way that because I know you care and you want to be updated because you can either provide a solution or sometimes the solution is just to listen, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, You can help me out, help me find a solution or you can help me by listening because as Peter Rollins talked about, love is giving what you don't have to someone who doesn't want it. Mm. Now, my pithy answer for Anna here, and then we can break it down a little bit. Uh, my pithy answer that you can tweet is, sharing our pain with our partner is a hallmark of love, but we mustn't batter our loved ones with our suffering. Yeah. So well, to me, the, it, it's it's sort of the, it's it's both. The, there is oversharing. Now, if I were to come in here every day, Ryan, but oh, my life sucks. If I'm complaining, mm. that's a problem. I don't complain to you. I don't complain to right. to Bex. I will tell you honestly if I am in pain, right. if I'm struggling with something, because I know that you would want to help. But if I go to the grocery store and someone asks me how you doing, I'm going to say I am outstanding. Mm. There are two reasons I do that. One is it makes me feel better to say that Mm -hmm. because they're not actually saying, how are you doing physically? What are your ailments? Mm -hmm. They're they're saying, hey, howdy, what's going on? It's a simple greeting. It's simply saying hi. And for me to engage in that conversation, I also need to say hi back in the most um, energetic way. And for me saying I'm outstanding increases my energy. And there was this- Absolutely. There was also this quote, the second reason I always say outstanding, who was it? Oh, I think it was George Carlin who said, um, um, "Tell people always tell people you're doing great because it'll make your friends happy and it will piss your enemies off." <laughs> and uh, well, I don't want to piss anyone off. It does make other people feel good when you when you say you're outstanding, and it also increases how good you feel at the same time. Totally agree. Uh, my short answer would be this: baggage weighs us down only when we refuse to set it down. So I understand where Anna's question is coming from here. We don't want to burden people with our baggage, mm-hmm. but but yes, I think specifically with our our not just our romantic partner, but just our close friends, close yeah. you know our family. Well, let's just say the the primary relationships yeah, in our life. Yeah, we should take we should take that baggage. We should examine it. We should talk about it. But if we hold on to it too tight, yes, like we could bring other people down. And, and that's not what we want to do. That's although, not what we want to do. Although sadly, sometimes that's in the moment. Misery loves company. Yeah. So, so the misery that you're feeling will encourage you to like 
pull up a chair and say, hey, stay a while. Mm -hmm. Come come stew in this misery with me. And that's why I find that complaining does the opposite of, of... adding to the relationship yeah. because then you're asking the person to suffer with you. Yeah. In fact, when uh, uh, I was in the bathroom here the other day mm-hmm. uh, here at our studio and uh, I was at the sink washing my hands. There's two sinks there and another guy walks up to the, to the sink next to me. And first time I've ever seen this guy in my life. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I hate these damn sinks <laughs> because the water pressure wasn't great. Yeah. And I just looked at him like, I'm pretty sure you'll be okay, man. Like it's like you'll still be able to wash your hands. It's just water pressure. Like right. you don't even know me. Your first interaction with me is complaining. Yeah. And there's like this weird cultural thing. That's how we get in good with someone is like, well, I'm miserable. Let me share this misery with you. And yeah. anytime I catch, we hate the same things, <laughs> right? What a terrible foundation to build a relationship off of. Terrible foundation. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I think it's important to share, to share your, your baggage with, with yes not just your romantic partner but yeah your primary relationships i think the question that anna needs to ask you know she asks what is that what is a good balance the balance anna is if you are complaining versus uh seeking to 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 have an open ear and and there is a difference i mean if we're honest with ourselves we can kind of tell when we are just complaining Mm -hmm. um well that that's why i talk about the 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 pain versus suffering in my my pithy answer Pain is not a choice. You're going to feel pain at some point. Right. You can choose how long you're going to suffer with that pain. Yeah. Amen. All right. Our next question is from Drew. Do you believe emotional baggage can be created simply by one's natural personality? And if so, how would you even start to change that? Well, my short answer is this. Before we let go, we must first loosen our grip amen i mean i can think of uh times where i've wanted to let go but i've clung to something so tightly what's well, the david foster wallace quote right Dude, everything yeah. i've ever let go of has claw marks on it well it's so easy man like when i think about my so going back to the relationship with my dad like mm. I could really use that as this excuse to be a miserable person. Mm. My dad treats me like crap. You know, I have this really bad relationship and if it wasn't for that, I could, you know, I could actually do something with my life, but because I've got my my dad who refuses to have a relation, I mean, I could really get caught in that in that mindset. Mm-hmm. And well, that is that is the opposite of letting go, right? Right. And by the way, if you if you didn't have that excuse you could search for another yeah, excuse yes right? we'll yeah. always find another and excuse some, and, and the problem josh i think is sometimes there are really good excuses there are really good excuses even if it is a good excuse though like we still got it we still have to let go of that baggage at some point yeah, even the best excuse is still an excuse yes you absolutely can tweet that podcast yeah. sean now yeah. one of the thing i'll say ryan is it is important so, so you have drew here saying do you believe emotional baggage can be created simply by one's natural personality? And what I would say is, is yeah, I mean, some people hold on more than other people do. Sure. There are some people who have the opposite of hoarding. It, it's it's called Spartanism, mm. and it is also, a, a, it's on the same OCD spectrum as hoarding. Oh, wow. Um, where people like have to get rid of everything. Mm. And, um, you know, that, and often people confuse minimalism with Spartanism right. um, as a disorder. There's other, there are Spartans, it's a totally different thing, but Spartanism is, is this compulsive need to constantly let go of things. Mm. And so what I've realized, that the middle ground is you sit, sit with it for a while, right? Um, you don't have to let go too, so- too soon um, because that's not actually letting go. If you're right. letting go of the emotion immediately, my mom died and well, I've suffered with it for 60 seconds. I've, I've now yeah. moved on. That's not letting go. Well, yeah, that, that that, might... that's just, that's repression. Yes, exactly. That's hiding something. Yeah. And so you don't want to do that, but you can, however, loosen your grip over time. And it yeah. took a long time. My mom died for me to, to let go with that. And I would mm-hmm. even say that that's something I'll cope with for the rest of my life. Sure. Um, the, the maternal relationship in particular mm-hmm. is, is one that, you know, I mean, Freud had books and books to, to say about the maternal relationship, right? right. And so that that's something that is the most extreme example, but with other relationships, it's like, okay, I can appreciate that for what it was, but I need to loosen my grip on that. It's not as precious as I might think it is. Absolutely, man. Uh, my pithy answer is this. 
It's hard to stay a victim when we go out of our way to contribute beyond ourselves in a meaningful way. And what I mean by that is I know for me, the best way to feel better is if I can go out and do something for someone else. Because when I have all of this pressure on me, when I, when I feel like my life is out of control, the one thing I can do is I can control what I do with my actions, what I can do with my time. So uh, maybe it's just going out and taking someone out to dinner, or maybe it's you know volunteering at a soup kitchen or Habitat for Humanity, or maybe it's just, um, I, I, dude, I love like just w- when I'm at a restaurant, I'll buy two of whatever I'm getting, mm-hmm. and then I'll just be walking down the street. I know I'm going to see someone homeless on the street, and I'll be like, here. Here's a bong. Here's, yeah, wait a minute. <laughs> 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 what restaurants you go to where you buy bombs <laughs> Man, we're in LA you can get anything yeah here. that's true but no seriously it's it's hard to like you said Josh it it is it's hard to do depressed when you are doing when you're acting the opposite of depressed yeah so yeah. so I mean, I, I, yeah. the, the only exception to that are certain like autoimmune issues or whatever oh, of but, course but but I, I think that that quite often we confuse sadness with depression we we walk around this malaise and you're right ryan we we can change that by by changing our state and one of the best ways to do that is to have a real purpose yeah and that purpose is always beyond ourselves yeah because if i'm living just for myself then i'm not really living at all Dude, you can any, tweet that sean anyone out there right now who is in this depressive state yeah like go out there and seriously volunteer for a soup kitchen just one day mm. w- one meal just volunteer for one meal there's some prep then there's like you know when you serve the meal and then there's some cleanup time so it's maybe you know two to three hours for one meal yeah but but that experience i just go try it out and then if it doesn't work tweet me and be like ryan i i'm depressed i tried to go out and give a little piece of myself and now i feel worse or i feel the same let me know but i i, I guarantee you that you probably will feel much better about yourself when you go home and go to sleep that night yeah or you'll learn that this is not a way that is right for me to contribute but you'll never know unless you at least try it out Amen. right All right, P.S. Ryan, we have two more questions for you. Uh, Barack asks, what are some ways to turn pain from our past into something that nourishes us today? I've got a really good answer about this, especially with with respect to Rebecca's and my relationship. I've turned a lot of past pain into something that nourishes not just me, but our relationship. But then Lee also asks, and this one really resonated with me, my mother died three years ago. It caused me such heartache and depression that I don't want to connect with anyone else because I would rather miss out than go through that mental trauma again. What baby steps can I take to get my social life back? And so, man, I, I've got I've got so much to talk about that because obviously I've gone through the, the death of my own mother, but also when you go through that, that trauma, you, you feel like, well, you feel like you'll never be able to connect with anyone again. Yeah. And uh, I want to talk about that. So if you've lost someone in your life, it doesn't have to be your mother. It can be someone close to you. And maybe they're dead in a different way. Maybe, mm. maybe it's like with, we could talk about your father as well because he's not dead, but like your relationship is dead. Yeah. And that, that's a different kind of dying. Yeah. So if you all like to hear our answers to those questions, you can listen to this week's Postscript episode over at the Minimalist Private Podcast. That's right. Every week we record an additional podcast episode and it's available exclusively to our Patreon supporters. So if you want to support this show and keep this podcast 100% advertisement free, then head on over to theminimalists.com slash support. In addition to our weekly Postscript episodes, the Minimalist Private Podcast feed includes our Ask the Minimalist Anything episodes, unreleased recordings of our live events, and the entire back catalog of past private episodes. Once you become a subscriber, you'll also receive a personal link to our private podcast feed so that it plays in your normal podcast player. You can find all the details and all the good stuff, including an additional podcast episode every week over at theminimalists.com slash support. And here is a snippet from this week's Postscript episode. I know for me, the, the biggest pains in my past past have to do with mistakes that I've made in intimate relationships. Yeah. And it's not always like like uh, burn the barn down, this was awful. It was just like, oh, I could have done that better. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's almost like going back in a way, watching the, the game day tapes. There's a reason that, you know, football teams or basketball teams do that mm-hmm. because they realize like, 
oh, I did that great. I should do more of that. Do you mm-hmm. see how we ran that screen? Mm-hmm. Perfect. Yeah. Let's do more of that. Let's figure out the recipe there so I can do more of that. Oh, can you believe the way that uh, I just left that, that when I was defending him, I left him wide open. Don't mm-hmm. do that anymore. That's a mistake. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. And then pulling that forward into new relationships. Okay, now it's time for our added value portion of the show. This is where we each talk about something that has added value to our lives. Well, I usually say recently, but this is, and this is something that's recent. I've listened to it recently, Mm -hmm. but uh, we were talking about emotional baggage today. So I'm trying to think of like an album. I know when you, you were like, Hey man, for you, uh, we were talking on the phone and you're like, Hey man, for today's podcast episode, try to think of a, 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 a recommendation of an album that gives you emotion right that evokes emotion that evokes emotion and it was just the oddest thing to hear coming from your voice because <laughs> because i know how you have no feels right, right. <laughs> well externally i don't but i you know my, my main emotion is uh neuroticism <laughs> <laughs> yes um no at damien rice who is this yeah. irish singer songwriter he put out an album in the 2000s called oh just mm. called O. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's basically 10 perfect songs. Mm. It's, it is a perfect album. It's definitely in my top five albums of all time. And some of you might be familiar with it. Some of you may not. And if, if you are or you're not, go back and listen to it. It evokes a particular kind of emotion that you, you can feel what he was, what he was going through on this album. You can feel the pain, the pleasure, the, lust the the anger the happiness the joy all in just a few songs and man it is beautiful he uh he has lisa hannigan on there she sings back up on, on the whole album and her voice is just angelic in, in a way that perfectly complements him and his songwriting the instrumentation is usually mm. really sparse but then it often builds up into this this crescendo of furious manic joy slash anger it's unbelievable and and you'll feel all the emotions in this album if you just uh sit with it for an hour it's uh damian rice oh dude for me um <laughs> i think on the phone i j- was joking around and i was like pink floyd the wall done <laughs> but it's funny because like it actually that album really does evoke a lot of emotion for me like when i was in the eighth grade um, they got that song on their mother uh-huh. and it was just, like my mom had just uh, attempted suicide and uh, you know SWAT team kicking in our door so like I mean there's a lot of stuff that resonates with me personally but your, your childhood was was like 13 seasons of cops yeah pretty much man. <laughs> it really was dude it really was um, but but you know I think uh, I think that was more that's more personal and the wall is such a cliche album uh-huh. <laughs> that like I think sir, like some people would listen to that and it would evoke a different type of emotion only because they've heard those songs so many times it's become a meme of sorts yeah right? yeah, yeah that so, makes sense so uh, the one I, the, the one that I will recommend that everyone listen to is it's by Joshua James and it's build oh. me it's build me this oh. and like that that album um God, man, it just, I mean, there are, there are just certain points of wanting to cry and then points of elation and then, uh, confusion, um, anger. Yeah. Everything. He does Mm -hmm. such an excellent job of covering a lot of different topics, um, whether it's war or religion or, uh, you know, his upbringing. Um, yeah, Joshua James is just one of the most, he's one of the most emotional performers I have ever ever seen in my life yeah you know i saw him my favorite concert of all time was on my 29th birthday i saw him in kentucky Mm. newport kentucky and uh he was playing in front of a he was at a bar of like 40 people Mm -hmm. and at first my my first thought was man he he's playing like there are four thousand people here yeah but that's not actually what he was doing he was playing like there was no one else at all mm-hmm. in that room. Yeah. At one point, I saw him on his knees crying on stage, and it was not an affectation. Right. It's just who he is. Now, we have two degrees of separation from that album in particular. Build Me This was produced by Nate Pfeiffer. Mm. Who I didn't realize that. Yeah, did the soundtrack. Get out. 
out of here, yeah. dude. Did the soundtrack to our documentary, Minimalism. Wow, dude. I didn't realize he produced that. Yeah, and uh, they have a children's album that is out now. Oh, wow. Uh, I, I'm blanking. Joshua on, James I, and Nate Pfeiffer? Yeah. That's and, great, it's dude. It's so good. It is so good. I'll, 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 send, you a, I'll send you a link to it. Um, but um, yeah, it's, I got to tell you, man, I agree with you. Joshua James, his first album is is more personal to me, but Build Me This is this emotional call to arms, and it mm. is... Oh, it's such a good album, man. Yeah. yeah, definitely check both of those out. All right, let's move on to right here, right now. It's where we talk about what's going on in the lives of the minimalists. Well, what's going on with us is YouTube. If you want to comment on this episode, you can do so over at youtube.com slash the minimalists. Also on YouTube, you can check out quickie episodes of the podcast. You can check out living room conversations and much more of less. Over at theminimalists.com, you can also sign up for our email newsletter over there. You can get Simple Sundays, new writings or new videos or new things about simplifying your life. Just go to theminimalists.com, enter your email address at the top. If you do that, you also get all the show notes anytime we put out a new podcast episode. They'll show up right there in your email inbox. We'll never send you spam or ads or junk because that stuff is gross. Ryan, what else you got for us? I just want to encourage people to read more and get informed. Oh, and here are some voicemail comments and tips from our listeners. Hi, this is Melody from Cheyenne, Wyoming. I just wanted to thank you for the work that you're doing. I came to your documentary at a time when I was incredibly stressed in my life and did not know what what I was going to do, and your documentary uh, helped me to see that perhaps some of my stress was linked to some of my stuff and all the stuff that I had, which was a lot. And so um, I read your your book, Everything That Remains, and began to um, travel down the road of a minimalist life, and it's really helped me have some clarity and to understand my priority in my life, which is my family. As a result of that, I went down to a part-time job. I have much less stress. I have decluttered my entire life. And my kiddo is on board as well. And they can see that the benefits in life come from experiences and not things. I did want to share a little bit about how we help our daughter uh, not get so hooked up on the, hooked on the devices. We created a chore chart for her that focused on developing relationships, learning new things, and contributing to the family. And so part of her chores, uh, in addition to other chores, regular chores, are calling a friend, having a 20-minute conversation on the phone, um, doing a craft, planning the meal for the week, cooking the meal for the week. And uh, it's, it's the principles that I found through minimalism that have helped us to really Look at the way we live our lives, the way we are in relationship with each other, my husband and I, and the way that we parent, and the way we relate to our friends and family. Hi, Josh and Ryan. This, my name is Carly Bruce, and I'm from Selma, California. Um, I wanted to call in and just thank you so much for all that you do and all that you teach to others. Um, a few months ago, uh, out of the blue, a friend of mine that I haven't spoken to in 10 years messaged me and said, I need to come see you. For some reason, I have this, this feeling that I need to come see you. Um, so she drove six, seven hours to come see me. And um, she she planted the seed about letting go um, and how having all of the stuff that I had in my house was – contributing to my anxiety and and uh, mental clutter and all of that. And that led me to finding you guys, the, the minimalists. Um, I don't believe it was her that told me about it. But anyway, started listening to your podcast and your pithy answers, while they may be um, comical sometimes, that's what makes them stick, and the, and you guys are in my head all of the time. And, and letting go is of things and minimizing is so much more than just throwing something away or selling it. Um, there was one thing I, I took out of my house and I just had this most electrifying feeling of, oh my gosh, I feel so much better with this gone. Now, um, my grandmother, who I just recently realized was my mom throughout my life, um, obviously not biological, but she fulfilled that mom role where I've always 
felt like, why am I not worthy um, of a mother? Well, I I am worthy of a mother. I have always been worthy of a mother. My grandmother's been my mother. Um, I just had to bury her on Memorial Day weekend. Um, I got a lot of her stuff. Um, and I, I can now, before I would have saved it all, I can now know that her memory is not in that stuff. Her memory is, is with me. So there may be a few pieces that I keep. Um, her Marine Corps flag from the ceremony is going to be, you know, um, picture, uh, put in a frame and things like that. But most of the other things are going to be sold um, or given to other people who it, it, they'll bring value to. Hi, this is Jennifer from St. Louis, Missouri. I just wanted to comment that as of last year for the holiday season, uh, our family stopped buying gifts for anyone under 18. And instead, to avoid the holiday rush and crush of the season, I've taken a week before Thanksgiving and written out thankful and gratefulness cards to my family and friends instead. So this allows me to put a personalized message telling them how grateful I am in very specific ways and also gets the gift giving for the season done before all of the quickness and craziness of the next six weeks ensues. Also, I'm a relatively recent listener to The Minimalist and you've inspired me to start going through some of my photos. And this year, as a part of those cards, I included old photos that I had duplicates of in some of my cards to my family and friends. So thanks for all that you do, and I hope this is helpful for somebody else out there. All right, y'all. That's it for this episode. If you have a question for The Minimalists, give us a call. 406-219-7839. You can also email a voice memo to podcast at theminimalists.com. And if you leave here today with just one message, we hope it's this. Love people and use things because the opposite never works. Thanks for listening, y'all. We'll see you next time. The Minimalists.